United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Mrs. Mayor, if you would do the roll call, please. I'd be happy to. <coughs> Lisa Collins. Um, she will be a few minutes late. All right. Gary Dunlap is He's excused, excused right? yes, thank you. Uh, Tom Cruise. Here. Alex Acker. I don't know where Alex is, so we'll okay. wait make him. Cheryl Hancock. Here. Anita Jagosinski. Here. Pete Miran here, and Tim Meniger. Here. Thank you. Thank you. So with six of the seven school board members present, I would declare a quorum. Um, just note that our board norms and ref norms are in um, our folder, and if you take a minute to look those over as a reminder as we <coughs> proceed through tonight's meeting. Approval of the agenda. I would note that the agenda has been posted, distributed, and sent to local media. With this in mind, are there any changes to the agenda at this time? Seeing none, then I would entertain a motion to approve the agenda as published. So moved. Second. Okay, a motion has been made and seconded to approve the agenda as published. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. Public participation. Is there anyone who wishes to address the board relative to any item at this time? We ask that a five minute time limit per person be followed. Please come forward, state your name, address, and topic to be addressed. Okay, not seeing anyone, then we'll move on to recognition and thank you. American Education Recognition Week, Dr. Carlson. It's that time of year again, a very special time of year where coming up the week of November 16th through the 22nd, we will join uh, school districts across the nation in recognizing, celebrating American Education Week. Uh, in your packet, uh, part of the consent agenda, you have a proclamation. But uh, in our school district, we use this opportunity to celebrate not only our employees, but also all those who contribute on an ongoing basis to the <coughs> success of our school community. Um, and so again, November 16th through the 22nd, I know that uh, there'll be uh, activities going on through. Um, it's our annual delivery that we get to go around and share some cakes with our employees throughout the district. I was gonna ask if and, there was food involved. Uh, <laughs> but also at the billing level too. So anyway, that is part of your consent agenda this evening. Okay, any <clears> questions? <throat> Okay, thank you, Dr. Carlson, and I think it goes without saying that the board <clears throat> recognizes and appreciates all that our educators do each and every day in the classroom and in, in the classroom and outside of the classroom, and those who um, help support our educators um, to ensure that our students have a great experience each and every day, so thank you. Reports and discussion, youth options report, uh, Mr. Bayer and Wendy Savasky. Hi, Alex. Hello. Good evening. Um, this is our annual um, information deal with youth, youth options, and this is our students that had the opportunity to take classes at either Western, the Turbo, or UWL. Home and High School offers students the opportunity to participate in courses offered at UWL, the Turbo, and TC. Students who qualify for the program can receive both high school and post-secondary credits. The application deadline is March 1st to apply for first semester, which is what we are in, and those students applied last year and then October 1st to apply for a second semester, so we also have that information. Student meets with the school counselor to see if the student meets the qualification and will fit into the student's graduation plans. All high school courses in the area they have taken. UWL class rank of 25%, um, and 10% juniors in an ACT score of 26, but turbo GPA is 2.5 and an ACT of 22, and TC is a GPA of 2.0. They must meet university and tech requirements um, or their prerequisites. 
Student fills out application with signatures and turns in. School counselor assigns and turns application to our Youth Options Building Coordinator, who at this time is Mr. Wall. <clears throat> the Youth Options Building Coordinator completes application and mails to schools. The University and Tech Schools contact students upon admission and registration. And we also get that information. So one of the things we're gonna make sure that we do this year, <coughs> unlike um, as much as we have in the past, is also to let the students know from home and high school because sometimes we will um, be able to let the students know before the university. Um, the uh, fall, what we're in right now, UWL has five students, Viterbo none, TC is six. The courses taking are, um, it actually should be CNA, Certified Nursing Assistant, Intro to Business, IT hardware, Cisco, intro to paralegal, computer science, calculus two, abnormal psych, French two, and literature, human experience. That's what we're in. And then spring of 2015, it looks as if we have more students, but what could possibly happen is some of these students um, may not meet the requirements or it may not fit into their schedule and our schedule. And the other thing is, our students can be in the class if the class is not full. We do not take priority over their students. I will not read off all of those questions, but you will see some that um, are the same as first term, for instance, CNA, accounting principles. And if you have had children go through our um, high school, you might see some courses, for instance, go about partway down, welding, gas metal, welding, tungsten, gas, we do teach that, but we have introductory courses, and these are more advanced courses that the students wish to take that we do not offer. Any questions? Are there any questions? Yes. Yes. Underneath welding, the <coughs> gas metal, there's a line X admin, and then nursing fundamentals and nursing skills, and then first thing nursing pharmacology. Any other questions? And I think we have had discussions in the past that um, <coughs> we always have a balance because we have AP, we have students that do the youth options, and then we also, you know, whether we can, whether it's more economical to allow students to, to do this or to have students do this versus um, the AP and then um, providing the options in our classroom. And I know as we discuss some of those things like class size and those sorts of issues, minimum class sizes, this, this may come into play on, on the sorts of classes that they do actually seek outside of the school district, so. And one of the reasons for that is we really do not get enough students in these areas to offer a course to justify paying a teacher. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, Wendy. Okay, then the next <clears throat> item is the employee handbook, and it looks like Melissa is making her way up. Okay. So, um, you have several handbook items on your agenda this evening. Um, I'm not going to go through all of them. Those that are um, no intended language changes, just grammatical, punctuation, those types of things, I'm just gonna bypass those for you. But um, again, all of these items have gone through um, administrative review. They've gone to the employee relations team, personal governance, and um, now onto the board. So. Um, review them tonight and then they'll be on next meeting for approval. So the first one I'm going to just quickly go over is the teamwork. This one you'll notice a lot of color. Um, and on our personal and governance committee we went back through um, some of our policies and looked at those and determined how we could incorporate those into the employee handbook because a lot of the language in some of those policies like employee code of conduct are already in the handbook so this teamwork is a portion already in the handbook and the colors that you see in the very bottom that is gray on the screen is what we are incorporating into the handbook and then we will come back 
to personnel and governance and um, bring back the code of conduct policy for you to remove from the list of policies. Um, the next one is dues deductions. Um, this actually, um, we will be removing language from this portion of the handbook due to um, the Supreme Court decision that was made in July. Um, we can no longer deduct dues from employees' paychecks, so um, the change here will be to remove this language from the handbook. And this we actually have already temporarily placed in the handbook because we legally could not put or deduct those dues, so um, really just getting your approval on this to continue having that in the handbook. Um, the next one will be alternative benefit plan. Um, a lot of the things you see on here, we tried to do a key. The yellow highlighting is new language, the blue is relocated, so a lot of it is just simply being relocated, reformatting, so it made more sense as we read through it. Um, the big thing to note on this is that we're suggesting to delay implementation until July 1st, 2015, because the um, change that we put in here in clarification is to help payroll and employees determine if they're new to the alternative benefit plan or they're enrolling out of the alternative benefit plan when their first payment is and when their last payment is. So to avoid a change mid-year in the benefit plan, uh, the recommendation is to not make this change until July 1st. So really what you'll see is more clarification, defining, um, helping go through and make it a little more understandable as you read this, and then helping people know when their first payday is and when their last payday is. Uh, the next is cafeteria plan. This is something that um, legally we have been advised to put into our employee handbook, helps us um, to have, provides greater clarity to the IRS if they were to ever come back and um, question what we're doing with all our, the alternative benefit plan. So um, the yellow is the new language. It's really just defining what we already have written into our policies um, and just placing that in the handbook. Um, next one is vacation accumulation. Um, with this language, what we are recommending is adding another option for employees. So as you may recall, when we transitioned into the handbook, we had employees who were receiving vacation at different times of the year. And to make everyone equal and on one date, we provided some vacation to employees um, when they leave the district who may have been on an earned but not allocated or so to get everyone on the same schedule we've got some of these banks out here for people when they leave um, we ran into some problems over the summer for people who were retiring and they forgot they had this and the options that we gave them um, weren't working for them it required them to extend their retirement out and then they had to contact WRS and it made it more of a challenge than it should have been so the recommendation is to add another option that allows them just a lump sum payout of that vacation that has been accumulated for them. Um, and then the last two are the substitute pay rates. So this is for the hourly and um, actually just the EAs and the teachers. Um, the language is the same and it really, this is a result of moving two teachers on call and that contract that we um, entered into over the summer with the teachers on call paying our substitute teachers and EAs. So really just saying that we don't pay them, the third party does. So that's all I have. Any questions on any of those or any that I did not go over tonight? Any questions? Okay, thank, thank you. you. Then it's time for our consent agenda. We have the personnel report, financial claims and accounts, second reading of the student code of conduct, and the American <coughs> Education Recognition Week. So I would entertain, unless you want any of those pulled out separately, I would entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda <coughs> items as presented. I would, I would make that motion. Is there a second? Second. 
Okay, any discussion or questions? Seeing none, all those in favor of approving the consent agenda as presented, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. Okay, board member reports and discussion. I'll call on board members in the order of roll call and ask that they present any comments or committee reports that they may have. Um, Lisa Collins. I don't have anything at this time. Okay, Mr. Cruz, Tip, Tom. No. <laughs> okay, what? Tim, I know, I'm sorry. <laughs> any comments? Um, not pertaining to the board. Okay. Thank you. Um, Alex? Nope. Oh. Um, Anita? Um, I have none. We have personnel and governance this Wednesday, but no. Okay. And Kate? I have lots, but I'll be brief. <laughs> <laughs> um, one is a thank you to um, Sue Eitlin. Uh, Tom and I had the privilege of touring pre-K and that was one of the schools I didn't get to last year. I still have a couple others. <laughs> You're not the only one that I didn't get to when, or two or three years ago when Lisa and I think went around to schools. Um, the kids are precious and the staff is phenomenal and what I especially enjoyed was the just this high level of all of your staff and yourself included in what is best needed for our little bitty bitty bits um, and how important those first steps are. Um, it was wonderful, so thank you for that. Um, this past weekend, I took part in the resolution committee for WASB, and I also attended a full day seminar on legislative advocacy and came back with um, a really good booklet, which maybe our district has already, but ways that board members across the state can advocate for what their needs are. Um, state legislature, legislators were there and spoke and listened. Um, many good speakers um, on many different issues. Um, as the resolutions which have been approved are forwarded to me, I'll make sure I get that black and white copy to you. Um, and lastly, in the red packet that's going around, <coughs> I just feel like I want to say something just in case Brian Olson, who is Jenny's husband, is listening tonight. He put a letter of thank you, and I think it's appropriate for me to just quote one of the things he said because it is, it is a week coming up where we honor everyone who works with our kids. The letter is a thank you in many ways to everyone who has touched his children and supported them and his wife as she was struggling in her last days. <clears throat> One of the quotes he said though I think is, is something I want all of you to know because we are public servants. We don't make the best money in the world but we have the best job I think. Here's what he said and this, this is verbatim. Numbers are things that you do. He's talking to the school board and that's important. But remember the people, the great people. They are not just numbers. They are the caring people who go out of their way to support those in need, particularly the children that every day enter their classrooms. So um, using Brian's words, thank you, Brian, for that letter. That was remarkable. Um, but thank you to every single person that works in this district from every department every department, the lowest paid to the highest paid, those who work the longest hours or the shortest hours, you do make a difference and people appreciate that. Thank you. Sure, Tom? I just wanted to ask, yeah, I was thinking I was on the Finance Committee, but yes, yeah, Sue uh, has a really good program and I uh, look forward to working more with her and uh, her staff and trying to make the most out of what she brings to the table for the Holman School District. So real opportunities at that age group, real opportunities <coughs> we can make some big changes. So I just uh, thank you again for your time. That was really nice. Water bottle too, that was really great. So. <laughs> thank you. Mr. Menninger. Uh, just a couple of things. Uh, buildings and grounds met tonight. Uh, we did some policy work that should have some policies coming relatively soon to the board. Um, I think we've just about got a couple finalized. Um, and then we reviewed some of the uh, third Friday pupil counts and how it relates to the buildings and uh, we continue to be in pretty good shape there. 
uh, for the time being, but uh, always looking out into the future and uh, good that that uh, committee continues to uh, keep the community formed on that as well. Um, and then the last thing, the weather forecast has us thinking winter. Uh, and just to remind everybody, no better place to be on the cold winter nights than inside the gym or at the rink uh, cheering on Holman Sports. Thank you. Well, I have a couple things too. I think I missed the last meeting, so I've got a couple aggregate sorts of things. But I did attend the um, Villages TIF meeting that was held recently, and we are progressing and moving forward. Everyone was in attendance this time, so that was a positive thing. And um, moving forward, I think, pretty routinely um, through the ranks. I know that the village and the county had some issues, and it sounds like they were able to work those out. Also attended an educator compensation meeting. Um, we have reviewed the steps or the survey that was done in the community. Um, we, the focus group also had an opportunity, those folks, some of those folks who participated in the focus group as part of that earlier, um, had an opportunity to see those results and then the next day the compensation committee came through and and saw that and we are working on releasing that information um, to the greater school district community um, to share with you the results of that um, but I think pretty positive results so good things good things to hear um, and our committee has set some dates to move forward then and we'll continue to to meet and um, the plan is to have some sort of resolution uh, that we as a school board will probably begin hearing about as we start to talk about compensation for the upcoming school year um, We the plan isn't to adopt that change although we may be able to depending on what we see and what we find But that we at least give a year out notice to our, our educators. And that's who this is primarily um, uh, uh, affecting um, so that they can make decisions on continuing education and those sorts of things um, in more uh, I guess informed manner so we continue to do that work also had since my last meeting the opportunity to attend the salt committee and they have a lot on their agenda and a lot of good discussion there and um, thank you Kate for your role as the the chair of that committee and um, I know that we had some really good discussion and it was good to hear a couple parents there um, some of their perceptions of things that are happening in the buildings and just the you know the um, impact of educator um, assistance and and um, the EAs and the but the role that they see of that teacher and the highly skilled teachers that we have and the respect that they have for those teachers to deliver the the um, education for their students so that was it was very interesting and then um, I attended the memorial service for Zach Vang. I can't say his, Kim Chi, I think is how they pronounce his name, his Hmong name, but I tell you, it was a very, very touching um, service. And I was so proud of our teaching staff and our educators and coaches and guidance people that were there that spoke. Um, and were there to console whether they were just recent um, uh, graduates, alumni of our school or current students that had played soccer with that young man or were on the SEEDS program with him. Um, and it was a Sunday afternoon, but there was that core group of people who were there taking out their personal time to again provide serve support and services to our students, both current and past students. And eloquent, Lori Kessler spoke about what was happening in that room that day and how this is what he would have, that young man would have left as his legacy to really see the Holman community, school community, Hmong community, um, community period coming together and recognizing um, a vibrant young man. And, and I remember him, not that I knew him, but I do remember graduation. And he smiled, he had that biggest smile on his face as he came across the stage. And I remember turning back and looking at 
my fellow board members and say this is what it's all about that smile that he had and um, great young man um, and just to it was my first time at among um, service and so I stayed a little bit later they had a nice slideshow and all of that but where we all had some sparkling um, toast to him and all of that and they had of course wanted to feed us but then the the beating of the drum and the some of the other things that were happening as the uh, Hmong tradition was just I, kind of um, invoking of me of this was something big that happened for our, those people who were there that day and it changed me and I'm sure it changed all of them so thank you for yeah. going I was yeah. out of town that weekend and it's just I I think it's so important that we as a board help our people grieve. Well, and I was just so impressed by our staff that were there. It was just such a nice thing to see that they were there that day. Well, that says so. something about them. Yeah, yeah, it does. It really does. So with that high note, then I will just review our meeting schedule that we have coming up. Um, the 19th, we have a board workshop with Matt Thale at 6 at Prairie View. The 24th is our school board meeting. The 3rd um, of December is a school board workshop, and that's a one-on-one. -on -one. It will be here. Matt will be here. Um, and then we have board meetings on the 8th and the 22nd of December and the 12th of January. Um, and then the convention, teacher or the state education convention is January 21st to the 23rd in Milwaukee. And I would encourage you to take a look at your plans and schedule, possibly attend. It's really, um, I think, a positive thing for our board to attend. School election notice, of course, Anita and Kate are up for election this year and there are in our packet materials and things that need to be um, completed. Um, and the, the deadlines are also included there. Um, so board meeting reflection, other than it was a short one, anyone have <coughs> anything else they would like to share? I think I still hold the record though. I, just I think you probably do too, <laughs> Nita. <laughs> <laughs> well, with nothing else, then I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Um, any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay, we are adjourned. And I know I was doing some little rain stuff out there, so.